Hi everyone, this is John. I am in, um, I don't know where I am actually, um, or I'm here. I'm amongst sand dunes. Um, just over there, a mile or two is Mexico. About 10 miles that way is Arizona. Uh, I'm near the Salton Sea. I don't know the name of the city, if there is a city here. There's a rest stop. Um, over the last few weeks, I've been eyeballing a place uh, with sand dunes. I've been wanting to check out the Salton Sea, but I saw the sand dunes. All this time, I thought sand dunes were only like Death Valley, somewhere far to drive. So I thought <coughs> I saw near Salton Sea was sand dunes. And so I thought I'd come out here, but every time I want to come, I just notice it's a four hour drive uh, with traffic or getting up early, all that kind of stuff. And I can get really lazy, so I skip it a lot of times. So I'm finally here. Uh, the sun's just coming up over this little horizon over here. I don't know if you can see it there. Well, it's it's there, trust me. And um, what am I doing? I'm set up, I'm just waiting for this part to shine actually. I'm set up with the camera down here. That is there, there, okay. So, uh, Sorry, I'm a little tired. I only got two hours of sleep because there's no, you know, I got to do this. I got to do this. So, um, the original intent was actually to go a mile or two down the way. I'll still get there, but first, I thought it'd be great with sunrise here with the sand dunes. Um, it was actually hard to pick a spot. Um, I like the views of the sand dunes from the other side of the highway, but there's nowhere to park. So, at least legally anyway. Come over to this side, there's uh, people coming out here with their, their uh, dune buggies or off-road vehicles. There are tire marks, tire tracks everywhere, but trying to find a clean spot. So the idea was just to pull over to the side of the road like I normally do, snap a couple photos and then move on. This required me walking up the dunes, which I haven't quite mastered yet. Um, Anyway, I'm just waiting. It's really actually quite nice out here. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna walk you through my camera real quick, see, tell you what I'm doing. So I just recently got this uh, Hasselblad 500 CM with a 60 millimeter lens. Um, been excited to get one since I rented one a while back. Um, I traded my old, my old, my two, my two year old Canon EOS R. Um, I have, so I'm set up with uh, Portra film. I also have one more film back uh, with black and white film. Um, that's one thing I really like about the system, you can interchange film. Uh, so I'm just waiting for the sun. The film I'm using is uh, Portra 160, um, and the black and white film I'm using is uh, Ilford FP4. So the light meter I'm using is actually on my phone. Uh, it's what I'm recording with now. Um, it's called light meter for iPhone. Um, really fancy. But the, I like it because it has a spot meter. And I've been testing a few rolls with this camera over the last few weeks. And it's actually pretty accurate. So go figure. And it, it was free. Looks pretty good. So I metered for F16. It told me um, an 80th of a second. This one goes to 60. So... It's okay to be a little overexposed. So I'm, now I'm headed to uh, where I originally came to see, but just before I go, I was as I'm walking back to my car, I noticed the, the wind's blowing pretty good and it's uh, blowing the sand over the, over the dunes and it's creating little trails uh, in the air. It looks really cool. Um, so I'm hoping to try to capture that. Uh, I switched to a 150 millimeter lens uh, just to get a little more reach. Um, the lenses I have, I only have two lenses for this camera. It's a, a 60 millimeter and 150. So um, working with what I got. I switched to the black and white film. So I thought just get a little more dramatic. FP4, I think, is a little more contrasty, so I think it lends itself well to this uh, environment. So um, I metered at F16. 
Um, it's giving me a 60th of a second, so going with that. <laughs> this channel consider going to my website johndukasphotography.com there's a store section where you can buy prints books t-shirts uh, there's even a paypal button in case you want to financially support this channel um, any help is welcome uh, back to the video so here i am at the spot that i actually intended to come to this morning uh, that drew me out here um, it's this old plank road um, I was reading the story about this place, or the, the history of the Plank Road. There's a plaque over by the parking lot. Um, the, the idea of building this was to, for San Diego, the city, to compete to getting to transport goods uh, to Phoenix or to Arizona, which is about 10 miles that way. The story goes that Los Angeles is also competing to be like the main hub for transporting goods. And um, somebody at a newspaper wanted to do a bet to see who could get to wherever they were going the fastest. I think it was Phoenix or Yuma. Yuma's just right over here. Someone gave uh, the guy from, in, uh, from L.A. a 24-hour head start um, because the, the other guy, the reporter, whoever he was, um, had the idea for this wood planks. So basically he had um, set up to have wood planks. And the idea caught on, like, whoa, that's fast transport. So they built it. The original uh, stretch, I think, was about seven or eight miles. There was an occasional double wide spot for passing. Hopefully you didn't run into somebody in between that. But it only lasted a few years because at the same time, uh, technology, you know, with the... So this was built in 1915, 1916, somewhere in there. Um, around the same time, you know, with the boom of cars people started they started building paved roads go figure and that caught on to where um, the highway that's right here it's the what is this highway 8 uh, used to be the 80 uh, replaced this uh, because the the road could be 20 20 feet 20 foot wide so it allowed for more cars and then also because of the wind it would often get buried so they'd have to bring horses out to uh, unearth the road and move it to a better spot or a different spot. So it's a lot of upkeep that was just not ideal. Anyway, here's the old plank road. Kind of cool. So for the sake of photography, uh, again, I, I went under the fence. Just wanted to get a better angle. And I like the idea of being low with it because... It's getting buried into the sand a little bit and it just looks run down. So at F8, 250th of a second, let's give it a shot. After the sand dunes and the, the wood plank road, uh, I headed into Yuma and I was going to photograph a little bit downtown there because there's a lot of cool old buildings. But uh, I only had three shots left and I remember along the way back there's this place, there's uh, Bombay uh, Drive-In. And it's funny with film photography, I've noticed a lot of videos, uh, the thing to do is uh, vintage uh, or stuff that's beat up or abandoned and for good reason because it just looks interesting a lot of textures so I'm here at Bombay drive-in and it's uh, kind of weird but kind of cool at the same time um, so like I was saying earlier my phone I use uh, a light meter app but um, right now I'm recording so I can't use it at the same time 
So there's a little trick to use something called a sunny 16 rule uh, to get an exposure. Um, I learned this in film school a long time ago. So when it's bright and sunny like it is now, because it's around one o'clock in the afternoon. So sunny 16, the 16 means uh, F16 or aperture at 16. Uh, and then whatever your ISO is, you set your shutter speed to. So I, the film I'm using is uh, Portra 160. Earlier I said, uh, I think I said I was using Ektar, but again, I was tired and I put the wrong film. They have the same wrapper basically, just the number's different. Anyway, so um, my camera, I said it's 16, f16, and shutter speed 125. It doesn't really go to 160. So um, on this roll, I got three shots left. So I'm going to just walk around and see what I can do with three shots. <laughs> feels like the hills have eyes a little bit because next to me next to here there's a an abandoned house with mannequins just kind of strewn about um, the one next door over this side has a giant chicken sign and uh, but there's there are people that live here so it makes you wonder how many people come through here to look around so I want to frame the couple cars and isolate one car and I don't want everything to be sharp. So as I was set to F16 or the sunny 16 rule, um, I'm opening up to F8 and it automatically compensates uh, with this lens to, to stay in sync with the sunny 16 rule. Because what happens is if you open the aperture a little more, you have to uh, increase your shutter speed. So. Uh, <laughs> the last shot there's this ice cream truck just behind you and it looks cool from the inside because it's all tore up but behind here is also this tore up uh, little wagon and there's a mirror that's busted that I thought would be cool for reflection but I have one frame so let's flip a coin I don't have a coin so uh, yeah trying to find something unique. Let's see, I'll keep looking. film developed now so you're kind of seeing it before I am or at the same time I don't know how it works um, but um, I am having a lot of fun with this it's also a challenge because I'm learning to be careful and not to pull the film out incorrectly because if I pull it out I'm learning to be careful with the film removal and all that kind of stuff because um, if uh, you can ruin film easily so as I've learned already with the roll um, so Anyway, if you have any comments or questions, I'd love to hear them. Uh, feel free to leave them down below. Feel free to subscribe. Uh, I'll see you next time.